Hello everybody. How we doing today? Uh, it's Leo here, your old hillbilly buddy. I am out today. It's coming off of a three day weekend. Uh, Heather's been out of town with her buddies. They went to uh, Sweet Springs, the sanitarium, and they rented the whole place out for the weekend. So I've been hanging out at the house all weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to get back out here today. So uh, hang on. Okay, we are in Burnwell, Kentucky. You can see from the sign right there. And this, for those of you who don't know, this is the famous Aunt Betty's house from the Hatfield McCoy feud. Devil Anch was a patriarch of the Hatfield clan during the Hatfield-McCoy feud along the Big Sandy River in the West Virginia-Kentucky border between 1863 and 1891. He led the Hatfields of West Virginia while old Randolph McCoy led the McCoys of Kentucky. And there's two other sites here that I want to show you guys today. Now, uh, there's one a historical site up here and another one over here but this right here this is aunt betty's house now a lot of you may have heard you know heard remember read uh about the the hatfield mccoy feud when uh john c and roseanne got together and how the story turned out all tragic and she comes over here has the baby the baby doesn't live long at all and john c and John C. Hatfield and Rosanna McCoy's baby is right up this hill here. Now, it's 127 stairs, so you guys feel free to subscribe if you like, because I'm working hard for it today. Uh, it's pretty warm, just rained a little while ago, and it's nice and humid, too. So, like I said, yeah, feel free to subscribe if you like. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this right here, as you can see from the sign mentions the grave of Sally McCoy. Uh, Sally McCoy contracted measles and pneumonia and died a few months after her birth. The death of Rosanna McCoy's only child, Sally, was a contributing factor in the grief and sorrow that led to the untimely death of Rosanna. Sally was laid to rest in the cemetery at the top of the hill. The grave is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Now, like I said, this is Aunt Betty's house right here. It used to be over here. Uh, it was moved a few years ago to this side of the road. It's a little bit higher, a little bit out of, a little bit more out of flood range, that sort of thing. But man, is that not just a beautiful old house? Look at that. Beautiful. I love those big tall columns. I always did. I always thought this house was really pretty. And then. And if you're ever over this way, the guy that owns this, Jim, he, 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 he don't care if you sit on his porch for a second and take a picture. He's a real good guy. Uh, he's the one that put the steps in over here going up. Um, you know, when Rosanna, after the baby died, you know, according to legend, she climbed this hill every day and, you know, just sat by her baby's grave crying. And like I said, if you come over here now, it's 127 stairs straight up. And the graveyard, one of the McCoy graveyards we're also going to be going to today, is over on this side. You see the little road right there that goes up? You take that little road and it goes up and around the mountain to one of the McCoy graveyards. And that is where Aunt Betty and her husband are buried at. And uh, we're going to swing by there too. I'm going to show you those. Heather and I came out once... Um, in the channel's early, early days, you know, uh, we came out here and uh, we had an Android phone. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we were going to shoot this video for you. And there was a hurricane coming. <laughs> and it, so this thing, you know, we get out and we're, we're already out. You know how it is. We're, we're already out running around. 
And so, you know, this hurricane starts rolling through. This is last fall. I don't even remember which hurricane it was. But uh, it starts spawning all these thunderstorms and stuff. And we still went. We still went up the hill in a, in a hurricane and a thunderstorm. And we went up with our little, our little Android phone and, uh, and got some video and stuff. But I'm going to take the GoPro up today. And I'm going to show you the baby's grave. And then when we get back down from there, we're going to go up the other side. And I'm going to show you guys the graveyard where Aunt Betty is actually buried at. Okay. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do but tackle the stairs. So, I guess I'm going to shut the camera off and I don't guess y'all want to hear me huffing puffing. 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Well, guys, I was wrong about something. It is not 127 stairs to the baby's grave. 127 takes you to the top landing. The baby's grave is right up there, dead center of your screen. It's actually 152 stairs up from where you park at. So uh, when I counted, I, I just counted to the top landing. 127 ends right here, 152. So it's 152 stairs. Now, this, when you get up here, it's, you know, just this really, you can see it's a real pretty little small graveyard back up on this hill the baby's right there well i'll show you that just in a second and there's a historical marker right there i'll show you as well but i wanted to point something out real quick <clears throat> you see from here you can see the roof to aunt betty's house that's it directly at the bottom of the hill now, i don't know how well you can see this but you see the yellow through the trees right there that's uh the state road has a you know mower sitting there beside the road it's the main road going up right through there through up through burnwell you can see how high this graveyard is and you get you just kind of picture imagine roseanne you know climbing this hill every day like the story said that she did of course there were no stairs here then you know it was just you know you climb the hill but i mean just imagine this girl you know grieving that much over her baby that she would climb this hill every day to sit by her baby's grave and cry and that's what the old stories say that she would sit right there right in the center of your screen and cry at the baby's grave <coughs> as you can see there's several older ones it looks like about there's two three four five six seven nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen about sixteen graves up here something like that so there's not a whole lot and you can see a lot of them are just the old stones we'll look at some of those in a second too but this is Rosanna and Johnsy's baby's grave right here. Sarah Elizabeth, 1881 to 1881, daughter of Rosanna McCoy and Johnsy Hatfield. And you can see the, the later stone this is the original here. This is the baby's original stone right there. And you can see it was just a, just a river stone. There's no writing or anything like that on it. It's just a, just a stone, very common in a lot of these old graveyards. But you can see the marker that was added later. <clears throat> and like I said, just imagine Rosanna, she probably 
stood, sat, lay exactly where I'm standing and cried over her baby. Exactly in the spot where I'm standing. And how wild is that? Like I said, there's a few others. That one's just, a lot of these are just stones, you know, just rocks. I think there's maybe three or four that actually have writing on them. Those two there are McCoys. This is a McCoy. That's a footstone. And that's about the only ones up here. And these are McCoys. You know, obviously this is McCoy family. And you can see just stones. To mark to mark where family was buried. Very common. A lot of these back in the day they painted them white too. They took old whitewash, you know how they do with the old fences. And they would do the stones like that as well. But that's wild, isn't it? Sarah's grave is right there. You know, you hear about all these stuff and, you know, these historical stories and these historical characters and John C. Hatfield, Devil Ants Hatfield and all of them. And John C. and Rosanna's baby's right there, right in front of me. Now this is the marker that they have up here for the baby's grave. Now like I said, you can see there's a few more here as well. Just rocks. Okay, now. There's two of these. There's this one up here. And there's another one at the bottom of the stairs that says the same thing but I figured we'd read you the one that's actually up here with the grave uh, Sarah Elizabeth little Sally was the daughter of Rosanna McCoy and John C Hatfield she was born in the spring of 1889 1881 excuse me and died when she was only eight months old in 1880, Rosanna met Johnsey at an election day celebration on Blackberry Creek in Pike County, Kentucky. They slipped away from the crowd, and when they returned, the polling place was deserted. Fearful of her family's reaction, Rosanna went home with Johnsey to West Virginia. Devil Lance would not allow his son to wed the daughter of Randolph McCoy. Rosanna loved Johnsy and stayed with him in Devil Lance's home, but became discouraged because he was unfaithful. Uh, disillusioned, she returned home to Kentucky to have Johnsy's baby. Her, re her father rejected her, and Rosanna went to live with her Aunt Betty at Stringtown, where we are today. Sarah Elizabeth is buried on the hilltop under the pine trees above the Uriah McCoy house. That's Aunt Betty's husband. Broken hearted after the baby's death, Rosanna grieved at the grave and lost her will to live. Humbling, isn't it? I mean, not just the fact that, I mean, it's a historical character and all this, you know. Sally was a baby, you know. She was an infant. Any way you want to look at it, you know, it's... Children, children have nothing to do with feuds, with wars. And, you know, if you've seen any of our, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know, you, you've seen how children, they tend to get drawn into these things. You know, the McCoy kids, you know, when the house was attacked on New Year's Day. Children, they, it's like war. You know, they, children have no part in the war, but somehow they, they get drawn into it. Weird, isn't it? And to think adults, 
we as adults, you know, would would do anything, you know, to keep a child from harm. But I guess a time of war, people get carried away, and I'm not really sure how it works. You know, how you go from being a normal, everyday person to wanting to kill the enemy. Eerie Jane McCoy. Like at 1875 to 1940 and Thomas McCoy 1872 to 1955 like I said there's only a few here that you can actually read so I figured I'd show those to you real fast This one is Lewis McCoy, born in February 18th, oh, February, excuse me, wait a minute, hang on, uh, born June 2nd, 1891, okay, and died February, I don't want to dig any. February, looks like 11th, but I'm not sure. Let me fix these flowers. And stand them back up. Let the rain clean them off. We're expecting some more. It's been a rainy old day today. You can see there's a couple more. There's one out here too. I didn't even see that one. Here. One right there. It's one, two, three. This is a child. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Looks like about 20 total. It's a lot of graves for a small place. It's not very big, is it? A lot of graves for a little small area. It's a beautiful hill, though. Beautiful little spot. Look how pretty. Just back in the mountains on a hillside in Kentucky. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. If you're going to have to be laid to rest somewhere someday, I guess this is about as good a spot as any, isn't it? But anyhow, like I said, guys, I, I just thought I'd bring y'all up here. and we, we had video before on, you know, the old Android phone, but it wasn't very good. And so I just thought since I had a little bit of time this afternoon, Heather's doing some editing, I would run up real quick and swing by Aunt Betty's house for you guys. Okay, so we're going to go from here. We're going to climb all the way back down the stairs, which I'm pretty sure will be easier than coming up was. And go across the valley. Go down across the valley and back up the other side to a McCoy family graveyard. It's beautiful. It's really, really pretty up there too. Um, but that is where Aunt Betty herself is buried at and her husband Uriah. Uh, they're, they're right beside of each other. And that is where we are going to go next. We're going to run up there and visit some McCoys. Some more McCoys, I should say. Okay, now this is the little road that goes up. Hang on. 
goes up beside the McCoy house beside you can see Aunt Betty's house is right there and over there's the uh, mowing machine I showed you and the hill up top where Roseanne's baby is now this right here typically if um, you know if it's a place that's on private property where the owner doesn't necessarily want people to come you know um, we'll kind of keep the location quiet sort of you know just to you know we don't want to cause anybody trouble you know just trying to make cool videos uh, <laughs> but this one here this one is public and anybody that wants to come and visit these graves can but I just thought I'd show you the the road going up through here check this out how pretty is this hang on Look how pretty all the trees, big old pine trees. Look at that. Two little fawns right now. There's one right there. There's another one just over the hill there. And that little, there it goes. <laughs> there was two of them, twins. Okay, we're going is up on this hill to the one and only Aunt Betty's grave. And you know, you just got to kind of picture, you know, got to kind of imagine, put yourself in her shoes for just a second. Aunt Betty, I mean. Uh, your entire family, McCoy's here too. All these are all, a lot of these are McCoy's. But your entire family has a feud going on and this is a really big deal you know it's a really big deal so basically it's a war between two families and you're gonna take in you know one of the one of the feud participants and you know bring yourself and your family into the into direct conflict with someone one way or another so either way it goes it's going to take a little courage on your part to do this in the first place to even agree to it you know let alone you know actually do this you know let the girl come and stay but it's family you know you can kind of see that <sighs> now they were I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I've been up here. Yep. There they are. And look at the moss, how the moss has grown directly on the grave. You go around here. Now you can see, I don't want to walk on them. You can see the original. Original marker here. McCoy. Uriah, 1824 
1889. And here's the newer marker, Uriah McCoy, 1824 to 1889, son of Samuel McCoy, grandson of William McCoy. And you can see the original footstone and original marker right there. But this is the one that we came to see. This is the one that everybody's always asking about. This is Aunt Betty right here. This is Aunt Betty's grave right here. McCoy, Betty, 1826 to 1915. Her concern was for a mother and an unborn baby. That's how you do that, isn't it? This is why, in my opinion, somebody like Aunt Betty deserves a lot more of our respect than someone who simply wanted to participate in the feud and kill someone else. You know, at a time when things were at their, you know, at their worst. She wanted to step in and try to do something good. That's admirable. And Uriah, he had to go along with it. You know, that was her husband. You know, he had to go along with this too. He had to be okay with it. You know, and like it says, this is son of Samuel McCoy, grandson of William McCoy. And we're talking a Hatfield baby. But it was a baby. And some people saw things the right way. Some people saw things the wrong way. Some people thought that if your name was McCoy or Hatfield, depending on the situation, that you were an enemy and you should be killed. And you had people like Uriah and Betty who looked at things entirely the other way. That in spite of this feud, in spite of everything that's going on, in spite of all of this murdering, going on we're going to try to do something good now that was cool that is worthy of mention by anybody's standards and I'm sure you guys would agree anyway guys like I said I just wanted to bring y'all out here today and show you Aunt Betty's grave and Uriah's grave you know they were they were historical characters, famous historical characters, you know, let's just be honest, they really were, you know, everybody knows about the McCoys, and every, anybody who knows about the Hatfield-McCoy feud has heard of Aunt Betty, but like I said, you know, they, they chose to do something good, and that, that is well worthy of coming up here and telling you guys about this and bringing the good camera to do the video. It was, it's worthy of coming back up for a second trip. Anyway, guys, y'all try to keep that in mind. You know, the rest of the day, tomorrow, next week, next year, you catch a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Mom used to say that all the time when I was little, and I try to remember it. I try to keep that stuff in mind. And... Here's a couple that did exactly that. You know, they're famous for having big hearts at a time when they probably shouldn't. You know, when everyone else in the family was trying to kill each other. You see my point? Okay, well, all right, guys. Uh, I guess I've been out here running around. Let me get over on the path. I don't want to walk on anybody's grave. 
I guess I've anyhow been out here roaming around I just wanted to come out here and show you guys this place and tell you this story about Aunt Betty and show you her house and show you her grave thank y'all for coming along we really appreciate you thank you to all of our supporters our viewers our patreon our youtube page members thank you guys uh it, it's been doing this stuff has been wonderful this has been a dream come true for heather and i and i'll be honest it it you know we're, we're not filthy rich so whenever you know one of you guys does like a super chat or some little something like that you know sends us a message you know hey here's a half a tank of gas you know it, it means a lot to us and so you know i just wanted to say thanks that's all <laughs>